Hello and welcome back to this uh, lecture 10 of Microsystems Fabrication by Advanced Manufacturing Processes. Quick recap of what we had done during the last few lectures. We were talking about the mechanical form of removal of material as far as the traditional manufacturing processes or advanced uh, manufacturing processes go. And uh, there we mentioned about several processes including AJM, abrasive jet machining, um, WJM, water jet machining or ice jet machining and also ultrasonic machining or USM processes. And in very detailed manner we tried to analyze the different aspects of uh, the different uh, mechanical material removal processes. Uh, as you some of I mean all of you may probably recall that this is actually the mechanism of uh, material removal in such processes takes uh, primarily by takes place primarily by brittle fracture introducing brittle fracture onto the surface. And uh, the brittle fracture is as a result of uh, the impact energy which is given by a flowing abrasive particle onto the surface substrate surface and therefore, um, it is uh, worthwhile to assume that such technologies can be utilized for um, you know uh, doing micro machining or uh, probably structuring micro features and grooves on surfaces. Uh, and uh, th this would be possible because of the fact that the beam size. Uh, or the jet size can be controlled as a function of the orifice dia okay. and uh, therefore, particularly in AJM processes if the orifice dia can be suitably tailored and uh, on, on one hand and then also uh, some kind of secondary protection uh, is given to the exposure um, the, to the rate at which the exposure of the substrate surface takes place with respect to the, the tool. Uh, we can hope of making very good micro size features and structures. So, let us look into the aspect of how micro structures can be fabricated using some of the technology that we have already understood in terms of the basic material removal processes in the mechanical manner. So, the first uh, <coughs> example here is uh, actually a work done by Matsumura uh, in, in the year 2011, uh, where he briefly talks about the making of micro channels or micro grooves on uh, the surface of a uh, glass uh, substrate using abrasive jet micro machining AJMM process. So, as this figure right here illustrates, uh, there is a jet nozzle which uh, is driving off the material which is in form of an abrasive slurry a containing of uh, serenium oxide uh, with uh, it is suspended in some uh, water um, suspended in a water jet and thus uh, this is actually a AWJ uh, process which is being utilized uh, for the purpose of micro machine. So, uh, in all these uh, processes where mechanical energy is introduced uh, creating a brittle fracture uh, as you go from the conventional uh, macro size domain to the micro uh, domain one has to remember that uh, the shapes and features uh, the small tiny shapes and features which are to be incorporated on uh, these substrate surfaces by, uh, by virtue of the impact of the jet has to be a guided impact and this guided impact can come from a mask a secondary layer of a sacrificial material which has already those features and structures negative of them embedded onto the surface and uh, where through holes are made by virtue of the negative of the features. And so, wherever there is a hole uh, created in this mask there is a tendency uh, just as in lithography as we discussed earlier for this abrasive jet to uh, go past the mask and hit directly onto the surface thus creating the material removal. So, in this particular illustration uh, of course, uh, if you have a jet of high speed abrasives uh, where the particle size is let us say less than uh, the sorry the jet size is less than 100 micrometer diameter. And uh, it is used for uh, guiding on a surface uh, by virtue of a polymeric or a metal mask. 
So, by the erosive action due to the impact of the particles which are suspended in the slurry, whatever is there on the masking surface uh, made up of metal or polymer uh, gets kind of embedded onto the surface of the glass. For example, uh, you can see this uh, micro grooves which have been machined on this substrate right here and uh, you can see that the basic uh, feature size that uh, one is talking about is about 20 to 100 micrometer spacing between these two walls as illustrated here in this diagram and uh, between two such uh, ends of an edge as illustrated by the figure drawn here. Uh, the size is probably something of the order of 4 to 5 times the size of the channel. So, maybe this is about 500 microns or so. Also what is important uh, for us to understand is that the depth of machining that is obtained uh, in case of such a um, you know abrasive water jet based machining is about 1 to 10 microns. So, the resolution is very fine. So, you can call this a microstructure. So, you have 1 to 10 micron depth 20 to 100 micrometers width separated by a space of about 500 microns on a glass substrate being made by an abrasive jet. What is also important here is that you know this right here is the secondary mask that we were talking about and you can see that as the jet is uh, positioned, positioned over the mask at a uh, certain you know uh, distance uh, from the surface of the mask. Um, D, uh, there is a tendency number one for the jet to spread out as it goes nearer to the surface, which is obvious because uh, this I think we have discussed previously how important this nozzle tip distance n t d uh, equal to d is uh, as a function of the impact that the abrasive jet would create on the surface. Here, of course, uh, one important aspect is that because the uh, the mask itself is made in a tapered manner. You can see that the mask is highly tapered. Okay. Therefore, the grooves which are eventually being made on the glass, this is the groove which is being eventually made on the grass by virtue of this tapered form of the mask is also tapered. So, we can realize, so let us blow this up here and try to uh, analyze what is going on. So, there is a masking surface uh, on the top and uh, there is a surface on the bottom here which gets exposed uh, to the abrasive jet. The jet is coming in this direction. So, this is the high speed jet coming and striking of the surface. So, obviously, uh, the particles which strike these masks would also damage or deform the mask, but because uh, you know the substrate can be either polymeric or metal, the damage may not be uh, that much in comparison to the substrate surface, which is more brittle, I guess made up of glass. Uh, glass okay. And so, some particles would actually deflect off and some particles which are at an angle maybe would actually roll off and go in a tapered manner to um, produce a brittle fracture somewhere in this zone which creates you know a tapered uh, micro channel eventually. Okay. That is the reason of uh, the, the tapering that some particles which are deflected off the surface of the mask are actually going and rolling along this taper mask and hitting the surface at a high impact creating the brittle fracture also in a tapered manner. So, one of the reasons why as Matsumura observed here in this uh, the how beautifully the grooves can be defined or shapes can be defined by just positioning and structuring. the mask suitably. So, this definitely gives us a way of using AJMM abrasive jet micro machining process for uh, realizing micro grooves uh, and micro features. So, let us look into some other aspects uh, about the erosive mechanism of this AJMM process. Uh, if the impact energy of the erodent of course, exceeds the material dependent threshold energy which binds the material otherwise, uh, particularly brittle materials. 
uh, what happens is that there is a propagation and intersection of cracks which come because of this impact okay, onto the surface of the material. So, this mechanism is most efficient for perpendicular impact angles, because in that event the, the impact of the jet is directly applied. Otherwise, there would be a component of the force if there is an angle. And uh, therefore, perpendicular angles as you saw in the last uh, case uh, is typically the position at which this jet is kept with respect to the mass and the surface. And so, what happens is that this erodent uh, particle uh, which are angular otherwise in nature uh, when they hit ductile materials under an angle of 90 degrees they do cause uh, a plastic deformation of the material. So, therefore, uh, because the mask is made up of such a material ductile metals the plastic deformation of the hard angular abrasive particles are almost uh, certain. Okay. So, there is a mass loss factor which would happen uh, of the erodent um, which is defined by this term here k rho by h half m v square k is a dimensionless factor m and v are the amount of mass and the velocity at which the particles are moving rho and h are the density and the hardness of the material respectively. So, in micro machining when particularly using a mask and when particularly this uh, business of hitting ductile metals come into picture, there is uh, a virtual loss calculated by this method of the abrasive in terms of damage or deformation to the total quantity of grains which emanates from the nozzle surface. And so, this factor has to be taken into account for really being able to calculate at the micro scale. the impact of grains passing through a ductile metal masking surface. Let us look at some other uh, examples uh, for mask materials uh, as conventionally used in the AJMM process. So, particularly for micro machining or uh, abrasive jet micro machining uh, you can use either ductile masks or you can use polymeric masks. There are certain advantages and disadvantages of using both. So, in case of ductile materials let us say like metals uh, very often copper uh, is used um, as a suitable mask material and uh, you can actually take an otherwise uh, uh, photo pattern substrate and uh, use that as a target mask by electroplating the copper on the top of that uh, surface. So, what happens is that uh, the materials which are typically metal like they being very ductile have a low erosion rate. So, typically whenever there is a abrasive particle which is hitting the metal mask there is a tendency of the abrasive uh, particle to embed or sometimes uh, even they deflect off the surface there is a change in the angular shape and size of the grains sometimes grain breakage. Okay. And we already calculated the mass loss which uh, is affected because of that uh, change. So, uh, especially at perpendicular impacts uh, the ductile materials would have a low erosion rate. So, uh, the material of the mask would be untouched as it is and the question is that how uh, you create uh, such micro patterns or micro features within the, the masking surface. So, there are several alternate processes and that is why uh, micro machining using or micro systems fabrication using advanced manufacturing processes is really not a one process or a one step uh, approach. It is actually a several steps uh, in a hybridized manner uh, conjugated together to achieve uh, 
uh, that kind of a microstructuring of the features. So, here for example, the micro patterns are created by micro drilling, uh, micro milling or laser machining. Okay. So, you are using so many other uh, non-conventional techniques. Of course, uh, micro scale drilling and milling being conventional, but even laser machining for standalone creating the micro patterns. So, you have a thin film of metal and this metal is now being uh, structured or featured according to uh, the shape, the negative of the shape that you want on the surface as a mask by using so many other methods micro drilling, micro milling, uh, laser machining, maybe ECM and EDM. And so, therefore, there is a machining step which is even involved in the, the mask making process uh, of uh, the later on uh, step of actually creating a feature using this mask on an otherwise brittle substrate. So, there are several steps associated when you talk about micro machining using AJM. The mask is uh, typically magnetically clamped. Okay. So, you have to ensure that there is no relative movement between the mask and the surface. Uh, the same was the case for lithography as uh, most of you have observed before that there is always a tendency to uh, hold the mask in case of uh, using a photo mask in a uh, normal stepper or a mask liner system by holding it through vacuum uh, pressure over the substrate. So, therefore, there is no relative movement between the uh, substrate and the mask as such. So, the mask is magnetically clamped or adhered in this case to the target to avoid uh, any buckling or uh, infiltration issues associated with the abrasive and uh, the whole micro machining would spoil if there is some kind of a uh, infiltration in particularly the gap between the mask and the substrate surface. Okay. So, you avoid uh, any such infiltrations, any such uh, intrusions of an abrasive particle and you have to really ensure that the mask uh, does not buckle, it sits straight flat on the surface, there is no gap whatsoever at any place because otherwise it is going to damage the resolution at which you are doing the micro machining. Okay. So, the limitations in this kind of uh, machining is that the uh, machining can be done over a feature size of 50 microns or more. Okay. So, going below 50 microns is a very challenging task particularly when you are using this abrasive jet micro machining. And of course, uh, metals of course, have this uh, tendency of uh, high ductility. So, uh, there is an advantage that the, uh, the mask does not get corroded that easily uh, in comparison to some of the other probably brittle kind of uh, materials which are used for mask making process one of them being polymers. Okay. So, when we talk about polymer masks uh, preferably elastic polymers need to be used because they should have they have a high resistance. Um, being able to store more kinetic energy of the incoming powder particles without causing any brittle fracture or breaking. Okay. So, typically uh, something like polydimethyl siloxane which is a highly viscoelastic material which is well structured, well patterned can be used uh, for abrasive jet machining process and the correct thickness and the correct sizes of course, need to be defined in uh, that particular polymeric uh, membrane. So, there are some commercially available uh, polymers and typically another aspect of why polymers a very important aspect is that you know there are some polymers which are photo patternable. Okay. So, just by uh, the lithography process we have seen that there is a, st a unique ability of these photo resist kind of polymers uh, like SU8, S1813 so on so forth to be able to get photo patterned very nicely at a good resolution. Okay. So, uh, using a mask. So, if you have uh, such a commercially available polymer negative resist, uh, you can use that as a coating or a layer over the substrate that you want to machine using AJMM. And then you basically pattern it uh, in a conventional lithography way, so that you have vias created, where later on those vias can be exposed with the mask in place uh, resulting in uh, the direct exposure of the substrates at particular areas. So, you have the negative resist foils and uh, you can use uh, either foils or you can actually photo pattern on the substrate. The resist actually if you are using S1813 comes off very easily from the substrate surface once it is dipped in acetone. Okay. And uh, for uh, other resists like SU8 there are some stripping agents which are commercially available which can also be used. So, another approach is that you create a layer um, 
or a foil of this resist material photo resist material and then suitably expose it and create vias and cavities uh, on a photo pattern manner inside that foil. Okay. So, both approaches are good enough direct coating as well as foil based coating for the mask making. So, you lithographically process them and this gives the possibility to make very complex and accurate masks okay, because uh, this is now having uh, or driven by the power of photolithography. And uh, with such mask feature sizes of up to 75 microns and a very high aspect ratio of about 1.5 or so can be easily obtained. So, let us look at some examples and they are very nice uh, images reported by Miller et al uh, in 2004 about what are the capabilities of an AJM and how small can really um, uh, the machining go particularly by using abrasive water jets. Okay. So, there are several aspects here for example, you have uh, profiling you can see this is a section of sort of a butterfly wing uh, very nicely carved out of abrasive water jet machining. And uh, uh, you can see the sections where the smallest division of such a section is about 100 microns. So, uh, you can really profile very thin sections with a mask which is exactly the negative replica of the wing shape. So, here the maximum metal thickness profiled with a 50 micrometer diameter jet is about 9 mm. Um, so, it is quite thick actually this sheet is about 9 mm in thickness. And uh, the typical cutting rates which are hit upon in this particular case is about 1 to 2 millimeters per minute. Okay. So, and you are using this uh, with a 50 micrometer jet diameter and you can think of it that using a 50 micrometer jet diameter also is not a very easy task particularly because there are there is a water jet which is emanating and there is a tendency of the grains to adhere to each other because there are some surface charges which are created because of the dispersion of the abrasive in the water as a slurry and then these charges may pull them together and create conglomerates or clumps of this material sometimes blocking the nozzle. Okay. So, there has to be a repeated flushing action and the nozzle needs to be replaced again and again particularly when you are using uh, a, a jet of about 50 microns or so in, in size. Okay. So, uh, with the decreasing uh, jet diameters, um, there is a linear decrease in cut surface area generated per unit per minute, uh, because of obvious reasons that uh, now, um, you are being able to raster on a lower part of the surface at one go. And uh, the cut depths to width ratios are much greater than uh, are possible with micro machining. Uh, lasers even. Okay. So, therefore, high aspect ratio and this is very high aspect ratio on one side you have a thickness of 9 mm, on the other side you have this teeny tiny feature here of not more than 100 microns. So, you can think of the high aspect ratio. So, this cannot be easily obtained otherwise on any other machining process except this abrasive water jet. So, that is the power of this process in being able to uh, micro size uh, the parts. The typical uh, uh, process parameters are the cutting speeds uh, vary from about 400 millimeter per minute uh, to about 15 millimeter per minute. And uh, you know for 400 millimeter per minute cutting speeds you can actually be able to process 50 microns thick materials and for this lower cutting speed you can go up to about 3 mm thick titanium. But still um, it is it, it does matter at what uh, uh, speed you raster uh, on the surface. Uh, and uh, as you can see here the cutting speed is higher uh, meaning thereby that the depth of cut of uh, the material is lower. Okay. One of the reasons of course, uh, is the fact that you have less dwell time on a certain area. And then as you are moving ahead uh, you are covering more uh, in terms of length but then the amount of depth that the jet is being able to uh, reach is lower because of the less amount of impact time that the jet would have on one particular area of the surface and vice versa. Uh, you can see that the thickness has increased to 3 mm uh, because of a higher cutting speed. Okay. Some other materials cut with a 40 to 60 micrometer jet this was a butterfly wing these are 
actually these teeny tiny dragons as you can see here and uh, these are uh, the scale is almost about close to 100 microns or so okay so uh, the minimum feature size on this dragon must be close to about 100 microns again with a 40 to 60 uh, micrometer jet and we can think of that uh, this has been obtained uh, from this particular sheet here by using a, a well lithographed uh, mask on the surface which would expose only those regions of the surface which are uh, not having any protection or a coating. The other regions covered by the masks are intact as it is as you can see here. Okay. The other regions are these other regions here right here and the area which has been unshielded is what has come out after the machining processes over something like this. A very interesting uh, aspect of AJMM uh, this uh, AWJM uh, abrasive water jet micro machining is again illustrated here this is uh, this gives a kind of futuristic way of creating uh, micro size um, features and structures for a variety of electronic and uh, microfluidic applications. So for example in figure 3 it shows an array of 33 by 33 holes okay. So there are exactly 33 holes here and 33 holes in this direction and each hole has a mean diameter of about 85 microns okay and uh, it is drilled on a 250 micrometer pitch meaning thereby that the distance between uh, two such holes of diameter so this tiny hole right here and the tiny hole which is close by here they have a distance of spacing of close to about 250 microns and each of them have a diameter of about 50 uh, 85 microns or so okay so you can think of the resolution uh, given by a combinatorial of the mask which has been designed and the jet in this particular case so this is an example of drilling using uh, abrasive water jet micro machining processes and this is uh, actually done in a 50 micrometer thick stainless steel okay so you can think of it that even uh, the the power of the jet is so enormous in this particular case that even a very high strength material like stainless steel is being corroded easily by this uh, process and uh, this particularly this particular process uses about 50 to 60 about 58 uh, microns or so uh, in terms of the nozzle dia okay so a nozzle size of 58 micron resulting in a jet which is of identical size is creating a 85 micron uh, over a 50 micron thickness steel sheet it is actually amazing capability that water jet machining has shown in this particular example. So of course the drilling rate in this particular case was about 2.5 holes per second. So you can think of the rastering or the scanning rate of the beam in this uh, particular case and for a range of materials uh, and uh, material thickness and hole diameters. Uh, uh, the uh, thickness to the hole diameter ratio for a range of materials and you know uh, um, the, the abrasive jet machining uh, water jet machining process that is being used. Uh, so the material thickness to the hole diameter is typically about 1.5 times the aspect ratio okay the jet diameter. So if the jet diameter is about um, close to uh, 120 micrometer the hole size in this particular case as you can uh, see here is about 85 micrometer or so. So such is the power of abrasive water jet for doing microstructuring and microprocessing. Let us look into another aspect of how grooves can be created on glass using uh, again a micro abrasive jet machining system. Here for example you can see this has been borrowed from a work by uh, Park et al in 2004 which talks about a process of AJM using the same masking technique. So it starts with the preheating and the UV hardening of polyurethane which is actually the material um, which would be eventually developed by the MAJM process the micro uh, abrasive jet machining process. And this uh, UV hardening polyurethane is used as a film material to provide wear resistant property during the MAGM process the applied masking process 
is uh, illustrated here you laminate you create a small mask film and laminate the substrate which is preheated and UV exposed uh, hardened polyurethane and uh, basically expose uh, using a pattern film okay, or the mask film which is this laminate right here and what it ensures is that because of this lamination there is a perfect alignment between the mask film and the surface uh, on the top of it. Okay. And uh, essentially a parallel UV beam is irradiated uh, over the pattern film to make an identical kind of feature exposed on the mask film which is underneath it. Okay. So, after the exposure is done and the developing uh, provided by a, a solution which is composed of distilled water and 5 percent sodium uh, carbonate solution. Uh, the uh, holes which are exposed through this pattern film on the mask film come off. So, they are now um, empty crevices which are created on this blue masking film or this laminate film right here. And finally, uh, these patterns uh, are used for exposing uh, the substrate which is down below here you can see this is the substrate to the abrasive uh, jet running through the nozzle onto the substrate surface. Okay. So, MAGM is performed using the patterns uh, on the machine and here the regions where the masks are removed as you can see here the regions where the masks are removed uh, in the developing process are selectively machined off. Okay. So, you have these vias which are created in those regions where the mask has been uh, removed by photolithography done earlier. So, there are some remaining uh, materials of the mask which adhere to the workpiece surface because uh, as you know it is laminated onto the surface and there is a amount of uh, pressure as well as temperature which is uh, given onto the plastic. So, that the adherence is complete uh, over the whole flat surface without any gap or air pockets in between. And so, therefore, sometimes uh, stiction is a major problem and the mask remains back to the parent uh, substrate. And one of the ways to clean it is by using ultrasonic machining or ultrasonic um, bath where uh, sonic frequency uh, ultrasonic frequencies are used in a, um, a water bath to create enough kinetic energy. Uh, so, that anything like an impurity which is on a surface and maybe a layer of the surface is uh, taken off and as a result uh, probably this is the one which adheres this layer on the surface is the one which adheres onto the mask. So, as soon as this layer is um, eliminated it releases the mask. So, at places where there is a remnant of the mask as you can see here these black regions typically are further processed using uh, ultrasonic cleaning uh, techniques. This is compare this is this is a very uh, commonly used technique in all microelectronic or MEMS fabrication aspect. So, that is how you actually create micro uh, grooves on a glass surface. Okay. So, the parent surface here is uh, really the glass. So, here in this uh, particular example uh, these micro grooves all of diameter intended diameter 80 microns or so okay. this is of course, uh, the depth of the micro hole uh, we are talking about. Uh, it is on a different scale this has a different scale. So, uh, this has been carved on a such a surface okay, using the technique that was illustrated uh, before uh, that lamination technique. And uh, we can see that the mast holes here is typically 2 to 4 microns larger in diameter probably because in this case the mask was a polymeric mask as you saw in the last step uh, there was a lamination issue which was involved. And because of that the change of dimensions of the polymeric uh, mask would be reflected in terms of change of dimensions of the surface uh, concerned as such. So, such results are due to wear of the mask films therefore, there is an increase in the overall size of the hole uh, because of this uh, change in mask boundary. And of course, the diameter and depth of the machined hole uh, type groove um, comes out to be 82.9 and 14.6. So, essentially this is a different scale you have to remember this is about 14.6 micrometers on a much blown up or magnified scale 
and uh, this here right now the right here is about 82.9 uh, microns on a relatively reduced uh, uh, optical magnification. Um, what is also important here is that at different temperatures uh, the laminating has been done. So, at one instance it has done at 90 degrees Celsius, another instance at 95, another 100 and 105 respectively and then you basically uh, try to see the impact at different temperatures. For example, you see that at 105 degrees uh, the groove which is created essentially uh, and this is the sectional view of the groove across the thickness of the substrate is actually very topsy turvy. So, the surface roughness suddenly increases. One of the reasons why this can be so is that uh, at a higher temperature uh, there is a tendency uh, at some probably points to formulate air pockets uh, as far as the lamination is concerned because of heated up uh, nature of the material medium between um, the, the laminate as well as the substrate. And uh, this air pockets may lead to uh, the formulation of some crevices at some point where uh, there is a tendency uh, to overall roughen the surface up. Similarly, uh, if it is at uh, um, about 95 degrees or so 90 to 95 degrees you can see that the, the features are quite uh, smooth in nature depth wise if you look at and also um, cross sectionally at a different magnification or a scale. So, this kind of machining technology can really be very effectively used for applications like uh, developing of liquid crystal displays LCDs. Okay. And in fact, these processes uh, have been tailored to the taste of microelectronic industries for some of the very peculiar kind of high aspect ratio manufacturing applications that the industry poses. Okay. So, for example, in a LCD monitor, uh, you need to probably have this kind of a uh, 80 micron diameter by about 14 micron depth structure on the saw, uh, on the top of a display. Okay. So, uh, such examples are numerous in fact, where uh, non-conventional processes have been merged to produce something which is of interest to the microelectronic industry. This for example, is another uh, very powerful uh, powder blasting technique, it is uh, same as abrasive jet machining in a different manner. And here uh, it is used for carving out microfluidic channels on fused silica glass. Again, one thing which is observable here is that most of the substrate materials that we are talking about are either glass of one form or another, uh, where the brittle fracture and the crack propagation is a bit easier. Okay. And so, uh, as we learned before uh, in our um, uh, fundamental processes, learning of the fundamental processes that uh, as the principal mechanism is brittle fracture, therefore, uh, the materials which are amenable to brittle fracture are the more well machined substrates. So, uh, all the examples that we have seen so far in the literature, uh, research literature are on such brittle materials and micro machining on them. So, this uh, right here uh, example has been reported from a work by Jang et al and published in sensors uh, in 2008, which talks about making of these different square circle and straight channel shapes on top of a few silica glass. So, um, if you look at cross sectionally what happens meaning thereby that you uh, cut this across this section you know and try to image it depth wise uh, you will see that it shows a u shaped cross section. Okay. And this is typically due to the material removal characteristic of the applied powder blasting method. Uh, when you talk about a powder blasting and a jet of abrasives it is really follows a normal distribution uh, and this I think I had illustrated before when talking about process basics where the central particles in the beam are actually having maximum impact onto the substrate and thus causes maximum brittle fracture or damage. As you move along the periphery of the beam, it is like a normal distribution, the velocities uh, fall down rapidly as you move away, because of the undue interference of the environmental particles, typically air, which collides with some of these materials creating huge amount of drag forces. And also <coughs> the very fact that in a nozzle also uh, the you know pressure uh, if, you, if you look at the velocity distribution coming out or emanating out of the nozzle it is really parabolic in nature. So, you have the axial velocities as uh, the uh, most uh, prominent uh, 
uh, velocities or higher velocities and as you go from the axial center to the sides because of no slip boundary conditions the velocities would fall down. So, typically that is what is reflected here also in terms of the abrasive uh, jet machining process and uh, you can see that um, uh, the machined depths uh, they kind of increase in proportion to the number of nozzle scans. So, if you have only one scan and as opposed to 10 scans the 10 scan of course, uh, the amount of thickness that would be covered by means of brittle fracture or the depth that would be covered of the channel would be higher in nature. So, the Jang et al also found out that the machine width increases as scanning count increases. Okay, so, both depth and width at the cost of that the scanning count is increased and uh, the larger the abrasive size it results in deeper and wider material removal of course, because of higher impact of the grains because of higher mass. Okay. So, it typically increases the uh, rate of depth based etching uh, you know if, if the particles are higher in size. So, is another very wonderful example uh, of micro machine patterns. Uh, of course, the uh, patterns are corresponding to about 20, 20 scans on a surface and um, the beam diameter that is used in this particular case is about um, 300 micrometers. On this right here is another very uh, interesting example of micro machining done in polymethyl methacrylate PMMA. Uh, if you can see here this is the cross sectional profile of an unmasked channel which is machined in PMMA. So, I would like to urge you to look at the profile created by the impact of powder blasting and exactly what I was saying that in the center the removal rate is maximum and as you go uh, towards the sides the removal rate is minimum. Typically because the jet which is emanating out of some place here also has that parabolic distribution okay, because uh, uh, that is how the velocities are distributed in a parabolic flow. Okay. So, here for example, what is also important for me to share is that if you look at the erosion rate of PMMA as a function of the angle of the impingement, supposing the jet were to turn in this manner okay, between let us say angle uh, x here to angle y. Okay, uh, the uh, there is a variation in the erosion rate uh, and the erosion rate here is mentioned in terms of gram per minute this uh, is a misprint this is minute. Okay. So, if you look at that there is a certain impact angle uh, in this particular case it is about 20 degrees or so where the erosion rate is the highest. Okay. So, uh, this kind of uh, gives a basis uh, which which really talks about standoff distances uh, as of of the nozzle as measured from this plane surface right about here so probably around this 20 degrees range the standoff distance is the optimum best if you may recall there was a relationship that we De derived before uh, in terms of the nozzle tip distance and we said that the, the machining rate increases and then plateaus off and falls down as far as the uh, uh, variation of MRR is concerned with the NTD. So, as we uh, raise this <coughs> angle from x to y there is a tendency that the nozzle tip distance okay, a nozzle somewhere being located here in case of x and here in case of y. So, the nozzle tip distance uh, is actually quite, uh, quite large uh, I, I should say. Um, for or, or vary I should say as a, as a function of the angle okay. and so far probably a 20 degree angle the nozzle tip distance is the optimum best which falls along somewhere in this region of the curve which results in a higher erosion rate. Okay. In this particular case um, the 
parameters that were used was a air pressure of about 200 kilopascals, alumina particles of 25 micron nominal size with the most hardened hardness number of 9 and they were blasted with an average speed of 160 meter per second and uh, a 760 micron diameter nozzle was held stationary in all the cases. The samples were blasted for about 30 seconds okay. uh, particle mass flow rate in this particular case is 2.83 gram per minute and at various angles of attack in the range of 10 to 90 degrees with a standoff distance of 20 millimeters measured along the nozzle uh, axis for the optimum angle. Okay. So, that is how um, AJMM has been used in this particular case for working on polymethyl methacrylate. Now, there are several other examples uh, in the interest of time this lecture needs to be uh, finished now, but then there are several other examples of uh, use of such uh, powder blasting or abrasive jet machining or water jet machining techniques for doing microsystems fabrication or microsystems processing. So, what I am going to do is to now start a new topic in the next lecture uh, which is about ECM or electrochemical machining and then towards the end of all the processes I am again going to revisit this topic and give a few slides uh, of what powder uh, blasting or abrasive jet machining can do in terms of material removal from the surface. Thank you.